common solitary thyroid nodule it is colloid goiter followed by follicular adenoma follicular adenoma out of this tsh it is most informative why tsh is most informative because of its ultra sensitivity because of its ultra sensitivity it means tsh can detect if you are going to see the level of tsh by this you can detect subclinical hypothyroidism and subclinical hyperthyroidism because of its ultra sensitivity we can detect subclinical hypothyroidism and subclinical hyperthyroidism imagine tsh starts rising it means it is suggestive of what subclinical hypothyroidism second situation if tsh starts decreasing it means it's hyper so this is hypothyroidism it is suggestive of hyperthyroidism this is the first investigation second question what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis of solitary thyroid nodule and you know the investigation of choice for diagnosis of solitary thyroid nodule and that's what it's fnac fine needle aspiration cytology it is fnac what's the problem with fnac there are certain limitations of fnac in thyroid swellings so question what are the limitations of fnac the first limitation is follicular neoplasms or follicular neoplasia so what's the meaning it cannot differentiate follicular adenoma from follicular carcinoma why because the diagnosis of follicular carcinoma is based on vascular invasion or capsular invasion in follicular carcinoma follicular carcinoma how we are going to make the diagnosis in this case there is vascular invasion vascular invasion and what capsular invasion clear and this vascular invasion and capsular invasion it's visible on biopsy so it's diagnosed on biopsy so fnac cannot differentiate follicular adenoma from follicular carcinoma we need biopsy for confirmation so first limitation follicular neoplasia or follicular neoplasm second is redel's thyroiditis what's the other name of redel's thyroiditis it's known as invasive fibrous thyroiditis invasive fibrous thyroiditis so here the term is self-explanatory in redel's thyroiditis there is complete replacement of thyroid and parathyroid by fibrous tissue so here if you perform fnac there is very poor yield or at least or no yield so the second limitation is redel's thyroiditis third limitation is thyroid lymphoma let me tell you one thing anywhere in the body if you suspect lymphoma or there is lymphoma what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis it's biopsy why because you know in lymphomas we have to put lots of markers for making the diagnosis so you need adequate amount of tissue adequate amount of tissue is required for putting the markers which is not there in fnc so third limitation it's the thyroid lymphoma so these are the limitations of fnc and in all these cases in all these cases since these are limitation generally we go for biopsy what we go for biopsy important point which you are supposed to remember related to thyroid disorders all thyroid related disorders are more common in males or females females so one thing is understood that it is more common in females so in this whole chapter we will not discuss whether it is common in males or females is understood that all thyroid related disorders are more common in females for most of thyroid related conditions what is the investigation of choice it's fnac so you can remember with f more common in females generally diagnosed on fnac and what are the limitations of fnac follicular neoplasia f follicular 
neoplasia and what fibrous thyroiditis invasive fibrous thyroiditis that is redel's thyroiditis third you are supposed to remember and that is thyroid lymphoma third is thyroid lymphoma so f word here more common in females generally diagnosed on fnac limitations of fnac follicular neoplasm fibrous thyroiditis that is also known as redel's thyroiditis and third one is what thyroid lymphoma now see how we are going to manage the patients of solitary thyroid nodule we discussed what's the investigation of choice for diagnosis in solitary thyroid nodule that is fnac if you perform fnac in any patient who is having solitary thyroid nodule there are four possibilities first it is inconclusive and if it's inconclusive what we have to go for repeat fnac inconclusive we go for repeat fnac second situation it is benign third situation that the lesion is suspicious and the fourth situation it's malignant imagine it's a benign lesion this benign lesion can be cystic it can be cystic it can be solid if it is cystic we go for aspiration imagine after aspiration there is recurrence for how many times you are supposed to go for re-aspiration three times we go for re-aspiration for three times maximum three times and after re-aspiration for three times again there is recurrence in these patients obviously we go for what hemithyroidectomy whenever there are solid benign lesions generally we give thyroxine therapy in the beginning if you give thyroxine therapy in the beginning changes are reversible the swelling reduces or regresses imagine we give thyroxine therapy in the beginning but after giving thyroxine therapy what happens there is no improvement still there is no improvement or sometimes there are presence of compression symptoms so no improvement or the patient is having compression symptoms right in these cases what we go for in these cases we go for hemithyroidectomy no improvement of thyroxine therapy or patient is having compression symptoms in suspicious lesions we perform radioactive iodine scan on performing radioactive iodine scan you have two possibilities either the nodule is hot or nodule is cold cold nodule means there is relatively decreased radioactive iodine uptake we cannot use radioactive iodine ablation here so for cold nodule we have one option only that's hemithyroidectomy for hot nodules we have two options either we can go for hemithyroidectomy or we can go for radioactive iodine ablation clear and you know in malignancy in thyroid malignancy what's the treatment total thyroidectomy so this is how we manage the patients of solitary thyroid nodule